the wave. Doing Let's the see. Wave. James is in Chestermere. Hopefully I pronounced that correctly. Alberta, Canada. All right, uh, Ferris, can you go ahead and confirm LinkedIn? I'll wait for your confirmation on that, Ferris. All right. Good deal. Thank you. Uh, and drop something in the chat there, uh, Ferris, if you don't mind. I am going to do so as well. Hello. All right. If you're just joining us on LinkedIn, please drop a hello there in LinkedIn. I want to make sure that we are connected. All good in the hood. I see you there, I see you there Ferris. Awesome. Okay, so we're going to cross that one off the list. Perfect. All right, folks, if you just jumped in, I see people coming into the room now. We got about eight minutes officially. Let me scan the room and uh, make sure I say hi to everybody here. Uh, Angela. Hello, Angela. Go drop a hello there in the chat if you can hear me and see me. Drop a hello there. I want to hear from you, Angela. We've got David. David R. is here, just like me. Another David R. Uh, James, uh, James N. and James B. are here. Awesome. Hey, hey, David. We've got Mackenzie. Philippe in LinkedIn. Yeah, we do. Hopefully I pronounced it correctly. And Betsy. Philippe and Betsy. Hi, Betsy. Yeah, if you're over on uh, LinkedIn, let me know that you're here. Drop a hello. Even if you're just popping in, drop a hello. I want to make sure we're connected. Uh, smash a like over there so more people can see this. And let me know where you are dialing in from or where you're uh, joining today from. If you're on LinkedIn, I want to know. LinkedIn doesn't do a great job letting us know, and it's always helpful to see where people are coming in from. By the way, a little sneak peek of what's going on behind the scenes here. This is just a little bit of the technology that we've got going on. You can see my hand waving at you up here kind of mysteriously. This is my hand right here. Uh, this is a lot of the technology that, that uh, we use to run these productions. Uh, this is some of it here on the screen, it's certainly not all of it. Um, but it takes quite a bit of effort uh, on our part, as well as uh, the incredible Mindfire team to make this happen. So appreciate you being here. I see Dave Nelson over there on LinkedIn. Hi, Dave. Ooh, Edward Alton, my man, is here. Thank you. Corey, been a minute. Awesome. It's been a minute, but I'm at an advertising agency now and have three universities as clients. Wow, Corey, that's great. Thank you for being here. Really appreciate you over there on LinkedIn. And if you just joined the Zoom room, please drop a hello. I see someone called Anthony Baker. Interesting, Anthony Baker. We also have an Anthony Baker on our team. <laughs> Good to see you, Anthony. How are you, man? All right, Craig is here from Oceanside. Where are the rest of you from? Let us know in the chat here in Zoom or in LinkedIn. All right, folks, I'm going to go ahead and start recording my fire team. I want the confirmation on that. Give me the thumbs up, Mac, Congrats. or the head nod. Confirmed, okay. All right, that's checked off. All right, looks like we are getting most of the items checked off the list here. Well, it's good to see everybody. You haven't missed anything yet if you just jumped in. We got about six minutes before we officially start. If you just came into the room, please say hello. Uh, we're simulcasting to LinkedIn as well, so I'd love to hear from you over on LinkedIn. I see somebody's in from India. Amazing. Wow. Uh, I see Inglewood. I see Canada over on LinkedIn. If you're on LinkedIn, please drop a comment, say hello, and let us know where you're dialing in from. And also, uh, smash a like or give us a, give us a heart over there. It helps us get this out to more people. Uh, Ferris over here in Zoom is representing Nashville, Tennessee. Fantastic. Vinny, it's good to see you, Vinny. Let me know if you can hear me, Vinny. Say hello there in the chat. You ready to rock, McKenzie? <laughs> awesome not your first rodeo right no but it's been a while so i'm just getting my training yeah. wheels back on <laughs> putting the putting the training wheels back on hey joe m i see you joe over there in linkedin i see uh erwin is from amsterdam wow haven't been to amsterdam in about three years had a great time there though mckenzie have you been there yes many times i'm actually going to be there yeah. in a little bit yep i set you up nicely for that one right yep <laughs> you know Paulia's i was here waiting on LinkedIn. to talk about that <laughs> <laughs> all right Vinny a hudson got the middle initial in there uh from jet mail is here 
Love it. I always like when people introduce themselves with their middle initial. It makes them sound very official, which I know Vinny is. Right? Right, Vinny? If you just came in the Zoom room, uh, please say hello. Zoom room. That, that rhymes. And if you're on LinkedIn, thank you. Uh, Erwin says, nothing has changed, changed in Amsterdam in three years. Okay. Beautiful airport there. I can't remember the name of the airport that I landed in, but just an incredible, incredible uh, airport. Mackenzie, what's the name of the one? The, the main one? A something. It's the best okay. airport. <laughs> Isn't it? It's like, it's like, it's incredible. Oh, that's my last name initial. Ah, got it. Vinny A. Hudson really Jetmail. The okay. There we go. I messed it up. Yeah, you, Shippel. Vinny. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Where'd you see that? Google, your best friend. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, Ferris? Yesterday, Ferris was talking to me or the day before. She's like, well, I don't know what to put into Google. I'm like, ask it the same thing you would ask me, and it's probably going to give you an answer. <laughs> I know my kids hate when I say that, and I'm sure you guys do too. Yes, Shippel. I see Erwin saying the same thing over there in LinkedIn. All right, folks, if you just came into Zoom, uh, thank you for being here early. We've got about four minutes before we officially start. I am super excited about today's material. Um, I know that I can get pretty amped up and, um, yeah, amped, I guess is the, <laughs> the only way to describe it. So I've got McKenzie here with me as well to keep me a little bit more uh, even keeled. Uh, McKenzie's going to be, uh, yeah, I know, it's so funny to say that, right, Mac? Mac's usually the one that's amped, but today I'm the one that's probably going to go off the, uh, the deep end here. McKenzie's going to be uh, in chat, talking with you. We've also got other members of the MindFire team that are also here engaging. So if you just came into Zoom, please say hello. If you uh, are on LinkedIn and seeing us right now, please make sure to drop a note there in LinkedIn. Tell us your name and where you're joining from. We're going to start here officially in about three minutes. And uh, LinkedIn doesn't do a great job letting me know you're here. So I would love if you could just drop that in there to LinkedIn and my team will engage you there as well. Uh, I'm excited about today's material because we've spent hundreds of hours um, over the past uh, month, and, month and a half, 45 days, gathering intel, working with hundreds of commercial print as well as implant marketing companies uh, and brands from around the world. So commercial printers and, and all sorts of folks that are involved largely in the production of direct mail. And my goal today, our goal today is to give you some new ideas that you will be able to use to create more high value print, specifically direct mail is what we're talking about today without falling victim to this freaking recession and all of the economic uncertainty that's swirling about. Uh, so that's our goal today. I'll tell you more about that in just a minute. Thank you all for being here. If you just jumped into the room, I see my man, Jonathan is here. Jonathan, I'm talking to you. Go drop a hello there in the chat. I know that you said you liked uh, the way I engage with you guys here in these webinars when we were sitting together uh, where was that? Boca, right? Go say hi. There we go. Thanks, Jonathan. Appreciate you, man. Awesome. There's Mackenzie Linders from the MindFire team. And uh, let's see. We got about uh, two minutes, Mac, and we'll get started officially. Thank you, Jonathan. Appreciate you. How's mom doing? Let me know how mom is doing. Dave, uh, David says, good morning from Corporate Communications Group. David, it's good to see you. If you just jumped in, folks, in Zoom, please say hello. I like keeping these sessions interactive. If you've been with me before or any of my team here, you know that we... We want to have a conversation. This is not us preaching at you. Um, and this is certainly not your boring uh, run-of-the-mill webinar. We do these differently, as I hope you can see. All right. Thank you, folks. I see some uh, people over there on LinkedIn. Who else is over here on LinkedIn? Please say hello if you're over there on LinkedIn. Thank you all for being here. Appreciate it. Drop a hello there in the chat. Uh, also, let us know if you're on LinkedIn, where are you dialing in from? I know that over on LinkedIn, my reach is uh, extensive, and there's quite a number of different countries represented there. Glenn, I see you over here in chat, here in Zoom. Brent is saying, uh, Brent from Kramer Madison. Awesome. Cool. Well, we got about a minute left, so I'm going to kick us off here very soon. I'm sure there's going to be a rush of people as we draw towards uh, the 30-minute mark. If you are ready to get started, please give me a yes in the chat. If you're ready to get started, give me a yes in LinkedIn. And give me a yes here in Zoom. Who's ready to get started? Give me a yes if you're ready. Uh, MindFire team, we're going to go ahead and kick this off here. We are recording. Looks like everything's good to go. My name is Dave Rosendahl, and I'm the president and co-founder here at MindFire. If we're not yet connected, uh, click the link that my team's going to drop here into the chat, my LinkedIn profile URL. Um, Mackenzie and, and Ferris, if, if you're watching me on LinkedIn, we're probably already connected. But just in case we're not, let's make sure we connect because we publish a lot of this information related to direct mail on LinkedIn. 
and I want to make sure that we stay connected. I'm guessing for a lot of you that are here with me today, with us here today, this isn't your first time thinking about the impact of the recession on your print company, on sales, on your livelihood, right? It's a difficult and confusing time. And the truth is, honestly, the headlines and the news, a lot of times they're conflicting, right? And it can be complicated. If you've tried to make sense of what's going on and you can't yet pinpoint what to do specifically for your print company, for, your, for the direct mail that you sell to clients. There's a lot of confusing information out there. And that information overload can sometimes keep us from success. By the way, I think you all know this, but freaking prices are going off everywhere, right? They're going up. This is a picture of gas here in California. Prices on everything have gone up, which is why many mailers I speak to are concerned that, man, in normal times, it's hard enough to bring new direct mail ideas to clients, let alone right now when costs on everything have gone up and it feels like each day is harder than the one before, right? I wanna put those fears to rest by assuring you that today, you're gonna to get at least two new ideas out of this material, at least two. There's a lot more that we're gonna give you, but there's going to be at least two ideas that you can take and apply to your business. Now, let's be real for, for a second here. This industry, our industry, direct mail specific is under attack, right? Digital ads, like those that come from this fellow here at Facebook, are taking more and more of the CMO's attention and the marketing budget and more and more of the credit for what we both know that direct mail is doing. But it's hard to prove what I just said, right? The direct mail causes the results that your client believes digital ads are responsible for. I'm here to tell you, and we're gonna talk about this today, that the digital attribution is often wrong. But the digital companies like Facebook and the digital teams that are employed by your client, they have their own reasons for wanting you to think that digital is driving those results, but often it's not true. If it feels like the deck is stacked against us in direct mail, you're right. Especially in the case of the social media companies, they don't benefit from you or your client succeeding with print, right? Mark here can't buy his $150 million lot unless he steals from the direct mail budget. You might think I'm crazy. Or maybe you know I'm right. They take attribution for the results that print should actually get credit for. My job, if I do it well today, is to show you the reality of what's going on and how you can fight back, all right? So the goal specifically today for you is if you're a print and mail company, whether you own the company or you work for the company and are responsible for selling and bringing your clients new ideas that use direct mail, or if you're just starting to think about how the economy and the changes in consumer behavior are impacting the direct mail you do for your clients, but I'm gonna give you some insights that can allow you to take some steps forward. I know there are some more experienced mail professionals with us today. And for you, you may already be doing some of what I'm talking about, but the ideas that I'm giving you are going to amplify and allow you to take that to another level. In fact, Robbie, I don't know if Robbie's here yet, but Robbie, when, she, when uh, Robbie signed up said, hey, direct mail is one of our core compet competencies we need new ideas to freshen up our core offering. And that's exactly what our goal is in our time here together today. My goal is to help you see how some very simple but extremely powerful things can be added to the direct mail you're doing to create new revenue streams, more margin, and get you even closer to your clients. I'm going to use this illustration a lot today, this idea of one plus one equals three, where it's like direct mail is, is one, you add another simple component, and the net result of that isn't two, it's more value, it's three. And I'm gonna show you why as we get into the material today. You might know us here at Mindfire, uh, the company I represent, we're 100% focused on print and mail companies like those that you see here on the screen, servicing thousands of global brands who use direct mail. But today isn't about us and I'm not here to sell you anything today. What I wanna do is give you insights from working with printers and brands across the US through discussions that we've had with many in the industry over the last 30 days. In fact, about a month ago, maybe a little bit more, a month and a half, I was a, with a few hundred implant mailers at the IPMA conference in New York. Was anybody there? Let me know in the chat if you were there. And we were speaking about the industry issues that are facing specifically implant mailers and how to continue to keep the direct mail, um, direct mail viable in that industry. And then about two weeks ago, I was at the Canon event. If anybody was there, the Think Conference, drop a yes in the chat if you were there. Another group of high volume mailers and industry voices learning, you know, what's happening in the industry and how are things changing? How are these leaders navigating this often confusing economy that we're in? And so that's what I want to share with you today. The insights that I've learned from these folks and the unique perspective that we have 
overseeing and overlooking the industries. We work with printers across the world. And I'm going to share that in three kind of what I call secrets that I think are going to provide you a significant opportunity. Now, if you've been on our webinars before, you know that this isn't a standard kind of uh, boring webinar that, uh, you know, some others produce. I do this differently. We do this differently. I want it to be very interactive. And so the first thing you're going to notice is that I ask you to chat with me. I ask you to talk with me and my team in the chat. So I want you to do that right now. Open up the chat, get your fingers warmed up, and I'm going to ask you a question, and I want to get everybody's response here. There are no shortage of issues coming at us, coming at you in the industry daily, right? Things like paper shortages, um, delays with mail delivery from USPS, staffing issues, inflation, recession. I could go on and on and on. I want to know from you, I want you to put in, this, in the chat, which one is your biggest problem right now? Take a look at that list. If I've missed something, please let me know right now. What is it that's your biggest problem? I want to read some of these off. Staffing, paper, paper and staffing, USPS delays, paper, <laughs> paper, specifically envelopes. Yep. The economy, paper. Over on LinkedIn, what is the issue? What are the issues that you're facing right now? I was talking to uh, Wendy, actually, uh, when she signed up for this, uh, this event today, a company from, uh, or a person from Modern Postcard. She said, how do we maintain the perception of value while we're facing continual rising costs, like paper costs, right, that create cost increase for our customers? Data privacy, says Becky. Uh, paper shortages, says Sean. We could buy paper, but not paper suitable for mailings. Yeah, there's a lot of issues coming at us right now. Keep those coming in, folks. I know we're in a tough spot. I was thinking about this. Um, as I was preparing for today's session, thinking back about, you know, how did I get into the world of print? For me, it wasn't something that I planned. Uh, but around 2008, a small print and mail company became a client, and they presented us an opportunity to help them with a small financial services company that they were working with. And I'm going to share that story with you to kind of draw some parallels to the 2008 recession and the difficulties that we all had during that time to help us understand what we're going through right now. And what happened is that they asked us a very simple question. The printer asked us to help them with a client. Specifically, they needed ways to boost response rates for that client and to help their clients generate more leads from their direct mail. Seemingly uh, innocent question, but that's what they posed to us. And to be honest though, I wasn't sure that we could help. Uh, my background is in web technology, going back to when I was in high school. Here I am, if you look at the screen, if you can uh, find me there on the screen, here I am in high school in the local paper. I started an internet service provider when I was in high school with two friends here. The picture is actually still hanging in my office behind me as I speak to you now. But my background being in web, I was thinking of, you know, how the heck do we help a print company, right? I was early in the web game. Like, anybody remember who this is? Drop, drop the name here if you remember who this is and what this is from. Yeah, this is MySpace. Yeah, I saw somebody get that already. So I was early to, to MySpace and all of these web technologies. And honestly, I had this insecurity around how could a technology company like ours possibly help a print and mail company? How could the internet improve response rates for direct mail? I wasn't seeing the connection there and the, the connection wasn't obvious, but the question was clear. They were looking for ways, the printer was looking for ways to boost response and create more leads. You know, they tried altering the list, the offer, the creative, changing the, you know, using a BRC, postage envelopes, all sorts of different things to try and lift those response rates. But what we realized through that process is that nothing clearly stood out as a way to increase response. And even more frustrating, it was that we couldn't actually tell what was working to drive response. So as we got closer to that mailer and to their client, I fell in love with print and direct mail, the possibility of what the web and digital can do for this market. I began to feel this, this tug to move the company, to move Mindfire in the direction of servicing you, print and mail companies. But then this happened. The market crashed, just like we're experiencing a little bit like right now, right? Those were some challenging and confusing days. And so I knew that despite everything that was going on in the world, if we failed, it wouldn't be good for our client, wouldn't be good for their customer, and certainly wouldn't be good for us. All the turmoil, all of the difficulty that we were facing made it 10 times harder to 
help our client generate leads. We had a big problem. These are some of the, the headlines from those days. Anybody remember this? Drop a yes in the chat if you remember this. It's eerily similar to what we've seen over the last year, right? And what I didn't know at that time that I've learned now is how important it is, folks, to draw close to your existing clients in a time like this. This is a lesson I'm still learning. But when there's turmoil like this, this is a big opportunity to lean in and invest when others are scared. And I'll be honest, in 2008, we got lucky. This wasn't like it was some uh, thought out strategy, but there's a big lesson that we learned. It's imperative to double down on your existing clients, especially in a time like now. If that resonates with you, drop a yes in LinkedIn, drop a yes here in Zoom. This is a big opportunity. Back to the story though. What happened is we started working and I specifically started working very closely with print companies. In fact, uh, this is one of the early uh, print companies that we worked with here, it's local. And I would work half a day, every day inside this print company doing the work that many of you do to understand how does direct mail tie to the web? How do we make this process work better? And we ended up adding something very small to the direct mail that at the time I had no idea what it would turn into. Let me show you, let me show you what we did. This is what the printer was doing before. If they were sending out direct mail, let's say to someone named John Sample, they would say, hey, on that direct mail piece, there's two easy ways to respond, right? They could go to the, the corporate website or they could call a phone number. Here's what we did. We created what we call a personalized URL or a PERL for short. Uh, a PERL is a special form of URL where the name of the recipient, if you look at my screen here, the name of the recipient is embedded in the URL itself, just like you're seeing here. So this piece, if we're sending it to John Sample, his PERL would be johnsample.mymortgage.com. Mine would be davidrosendahl.mymortgage.com and so on for each of you, right? Now here's what we learned about the power of Pearl. Over the course of the next few months, as this was unfolding, what we realized is that it was a deceptively simple strategy and deceptively powerful. In other words, it had the power to make things easier for the consumer, the person receiving that mail, because it gave them a way to respond online. Back in 2008, it wasn't necessarily clear that everything was going to the web. Now, you and I both know that that's the case. But what happened is we were able to tap into that movement. And for the printer, it gave them visibility, a way to prove that what they were doing mattered. And for the brand, the end customer that was leveraging that direct mail to engage their customers, it gave them real-time leads. That's a big thing. Speed to response is critical for many of your clients. Being able to react to leads in seconds, in this particular case, changed everything. So that's kind of where this all started. Now, what happened from there, I remember this, this day, I realized how important all of this was when AWS, where our platform was hosted, went down. I suddenly realized how vital this had become to our client and the end customer. Here's Jeff Bezos, I blame him for this insight. Here he is laughing at me for being so slow to realize. Maybe he's laughing because he tripped over one of the fricking servers at AWS. I don't know what happened, but all jokes aside, this was the light bulb moment when I realized there's something here. People don't call and freak out. The customer was calling upset, right? Because anybody else had an issue. They don't call. People don't call and freak out unless it's important. At least most people don't. A few weeks back, I was with Brent Taylor from Rico. Strategic sales and new business development at Rico, VP. And as I was sharing the story with him, he reminded me something that print, direct mail is communication. The value of direct mail is that it's the first step in communicating between you and your prospect or client. And what I realized in 2008 here was that the value of the direct mail plus the pearl when taken together, when Jeff Bezos freaking tripped over the damn server, that disrupted the portion of the process where the real value was. In getting a response from the recipient, in generating leads, leads that turn into sales. And that communication process had been impacted and both the, the print company as well as the end customer were aware of this because of the pearl. And so that was the light bulb moment where we realized every single piece of mail needs this. Every single piece of direct mail that demands a response 
from the consumer needs a trackable digital counterpart. So if you're doing direct mail and that direct mail requires a response from the recipient, you need to give that person a way to respond online. Even better, that link needs to be personalized so that your client, the brand that you're providing service to do, knows who's responding. Even if they don't complete the form or whatever it is on the other side of the link, the Pearl allows you to know that. Are you getting this? Let me know if I'm explaining this well. Give me a yes in the chat if you're getting this. Give me a yes on LinkedIn. Give me a yes in Zoom if you're getting this. What we did is we created a, a three-step simple framework. I'm going to share that with you now, um, which now has been used by tens of thousands of, of companies since that time. By the way, if you want a copy of this presentation, feel free to take a picture of what I'm about to bring up here on the screen or ask my team and we'll send over the, the complete deck to you after the event today. You don't, you don't have to write all of this down. I want to make sure you get this. If this is helpful to you, we'll send it to you after the event. All right, here is the framework. Here's what we found work to make print direct mail an order of magnitude more valuable. Three simple steps, okay? First, on the direct mail piece, you look at step one here, add a pearl to that direct mail. That was the first part of the framework. Second, we created a dynamic landing page, or what we call a pearl microsite for short, that is a landing page that's specific to that campaign and that person, personalized to the campaign and that person to capture response from that direct mail piece. Third, we captured every click, all of the web traffic, and pushed those leads to the call center, to a sales team in real time. And, write this down, even if someone goes to the Pearl microsite and doesn't take the action that you want of them, even if they don't take that action, you know who they are. And in this case, the call center, that call center can receive the information, pick up the phone and give that incomplete lead a call. That insight alone generated thousands, thousands of leads. And so this is the process that we applied. This resulted in billions in revenue, believe it or not, billions in revenue for the end customer. And for the print company, it allowed them to transform and really take the next step in their evolution because this kind of technology drew them closer to their customer. And for us here, that's kind of my backstory, right? That's what brings me to this stage, the opportunity to speak to you, to speak to folks around the, the nation, around how much of an opportunity there is to help print mail companies fight back against the things that I described to you a moment ago. This is what set us off on the course of serving uh, printers, implants, volume mailers, et cetera. And so it's this experience that brings me to this conversation today. I'm sure many of you, as you heard my story there, talk about kind of that silver lining in the 2008 situation. I'm sure many of you have had life bring you challenges where if you look at it one way, you can say, man, this is a tough, crappy situation. Or you can choose to look at the positive and say, okay, how do I find the opportunity here, right? Anybody have a story like that? I bet you do. My hope is today that maybe one of these insights that I'm gonna share with you here, maybe something you hear today will be one of those points that gives you the starting point that allows you to move forward in a way that you hadn't thought about before today, all right? So with that preamble, let's drill down into the three secrets. I'm gonna share, share with you three things, three reasons I think you need to rethink how you serve your clients with direct mail. I see the questions coming in McKenzie is going to try to answer as many of those as we can in real time here in the chat. And then she's also going to collect some of those and we're going to do them at the end of the event today. All right. So keep those questions coming in. Now, there are a lot of ways as I go into these secrets, there's a lot of ways that we're working as a company to help folks like you connect print to the digital realm. So, you know, we're working on things like NFTs, blockchain, the metaverse, connecting all of those to direct mail, but that's a whole other conversation. I'm gonna focus this very specifically today in one area, and I'm gonna peel that back for you and start to describe the opportunities that you have. So starting here with secret number one, how an unexpected global event changed consumer behavior in favor of this direct mail amplifier. That's where we're gonna start today. I wanna make sure we talk about something important as it pertains to the direct mail that you do for your clients. When you think about the service that you offer, the direct mail you offer, uh, print devices, certainly very important, right? 
the substrates that you use, certainly really important. Inks, the, the inks that you choose, certainly very important. The paper, right? I mean, I know it's hard to get paper. All of those things, the print devices, the substrates, all of those things that you use to manufacture that direct mail, yes, they're important, but ultimately, what makes the mail successful are the words, the copy, with a great call to action. That's what actually makes that mail successful for your customer. Would you agree? Give me an X in the chat if you agree with that. I know the list, the offer, the creative, all of those things have to work together. But assuming you have those things, it's what you say and the call to action in the mailer that delivers the next step. And a great CTA is significantly boosted with a pearl. So when you add a pearl to a direct mail call to action, you get this one plus one equals three effect that I've mentioned to you because you're helping your client drive the business objective, which is usually tied to revenue. But there's something else you can add to the CTA. That's what I want to focus on here. Something that emerged during the pandemic. We were all living our lives. I'm sure everybody remembers this. Moving along nicely. And then suddenly, right, COVID got in the way of so many things. It was deeply impacting, uh, impactful for us. Had a ripple effect in the industry. I'm sure many of you can remember the challenges that were uh, it, that we all experience. And in fact, we're still experiencing some of those challenges now. But through that process, something very powerful happened, something that impacts your direct mail. And what happened is that consumer behavior changed relatively quickly, very quickly over that, that period of time. What we realized is that for, for all of you, print and mail companies, a specific use case was reborn, if you will, because of the pandemic. And that use case is QR codes. Now, before you tune out and say, hey, QR codes are a thing of the past, hold on a second here. If you think about how the pandemic has changed consumer behavior, everyone, including my grandma here, <laughs> is now comfortable whipping out their phone right here and scanning a QR code, right? You all agree? Give me a yes in the chat there. This means, give me a yes. I want to know if you agree. Give me a yes. Okay, I see the yes is coming in. This means... If this is the old way to do direct mail, then I'm talking about a three-step process here that builds on the consumer behavior, the change in the consumer behavior that we see with my grandma, all right? If I can use my grandma as the illustration here. So let me show you three steps. Step one, as I showed you a moment ago, add the pearl to that direct mail piece, okay? Step two, please, 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 don't miss this opportunity, folks. Add a personalized QR code. This is a special kind of QR code that makes it easy for the recipient of this mail piece to scan that QR code and respond online. It's a QR code that's engineered in a specific way. I'll talk to you more about that in a second. But this is a significant opportunity to add value for your customer. Don't miss this. Let me assure you're making sense of this and that you're seeing this clearly. On the left, for a moment, let's imagine that this is the traditional form of direct mail, maybe the kind of direct mail that you're doing right now, okay? So it's got a website on it and maybe a phone number. Let's say that, okay? You're sending out this direct mail for your customer. Now, you don't know, nor do you get credit for, the people that go to that website, mortgagecompany.com, right? You have no way of knowing how much web traffic that direct mail is generating. I bet your client doesn't know either. They may see a, a blip in web traffic, but that it's pushed there by the direct mail piece, you don't know and they don't know. Secondly, you don't know, nor do you get credit for the people that go to Google and then type in mortgagecompany.com. Anybody seen this? If you watch how people use the web, many times people will get an offline form of advertising, they'll hear something on TV or a direct mail piece and they go to Google to type in either the URL into Google or they type the name of the company into the Google and then they click the link that comes up. What happens there is then Google and the digital team gets attribution or credit for that activity. But it wasn't digital that drove that. It was the direct mail piece. But you won't know that. You might know, if you're lucky, how many people call the phone number, if it's a trackable phone number, right? So why this is important is because with this tracking, the Pearl and the personalized QR code, this is what happens now on the right-hand side here. This is the third step with this tracking, okay? Now you know exactly who by name and you get credit for everyone who types in their pearl. You know exactly who and you get credit for everyone that scans the QR code, even if that respondent doesn't complete 
whatever the next step is on the website. You still get that attribution. Does this make sense? Are you getting this? Give me a yes in the chat if you're seeing why this is so important. Give me a yes there in the chat. This workflow makes it possible for you to start to quantify the direct mail response. And I, as I've watched this, to be honest with you folks, I'm amazed at how something so simple, you know, there's one plus one equaling not two, but three in this, in this scenario. It isn't something necessarily earth shattering, but while it seems simple to me and maybe to you, it's life changing for many organizations. And simply put, it gives direct mail the credit it freaking deserves. A personalized URL and a personalized QR code can lift response by two to three X. And so as I've watched the industry transform and as we've been there to help you do that, it doesn't require an enormous amount of change on your part or on your customer's part to take advantage of this. And yet most of your competitors are not doing this. Most print companies, most mail companies out there are not offering this. That's why you're hearing me get kind of excited here as I'm talking to you. You have a significant opportunity, friends, to take advantage of this. So that's number one. Number two, secret number two. The simplest way for mailers to add digital to direct mail without hiring more people. This is important, okay? Because as I've been out talking to folks, we've got the economic issues, supply chain challenges. A lot of you said that people and, and resources were a challenge. This has made it difficult for mailers, we've noticed, because there are resource and people challenges everywhere, right? This presents a problem when you're trying to go from the strategy that this hyped up Dave guy is talking about here to the actual execution, right? It takes people, whether that be in sales or in campaign delivery, it's difficult to find good people. And the, the people that you have, the existing staff, people are asking for more money. Um, no one is sitting around idle saying, yeah, you know, train me up on this new technology. I've got nothing else going on, right? And what we have realized is that as a technology partner to the print community, we haven't made it easy enough to employ this technology. I, I take that personally. We've heard that criticism. It's just, it's just hard, right? And so while we've offered training and built new features and invested in, in sessions like this, added new bells and whistles, all of those things help, but none of these overcome the challenge of finding people who can build these types of campaigns. This has become even more pronounced. You probably heard the, the great resignation, right? All the jobs issues that we're facing. And so over the last 60 to 90 days, as we've been looking into this, we stumbled on something surprising. I'm gonna, I wanna share that with you, but I wanna take a quick aside. By the way, if anybody knows this, I'm really, really, really curious to know. I found something as I was looking into this that surprised me. Apparently there's this new um, trend called quit talks. Anybody heard of quit talks? Where people are quitting their jobs and making TikTok videos of themselves right before they quit in style, you know, they're going out with a bang. Anybody familiar with this? Let me know in the chat if anybody knows this, but seriously, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, those people who are making quit talks, right? Roughly 4.27 million people quit their jobs in May alone. This is the last time the data was available. And this is stunning, roughly 20%. One out of five people in this room here, one out of five people are saying that they plan to quit their jobs this year. What the heck? Another uh, survey here, the Global Workforce Hopes and Fears Survey, they gathered data from over 52,000 people. And the number one reason people are saying are, they're quitting their jobs? Because of those damn quit talks. No, I'm kidding. It's not the, it's not the quick talks. It's because of income-related reasons. And, and largely, that's due to inflation, which this year has been setting month-over-month -month records, right? 40-year high since 1981. And so what was clear to us as we looked at this and we tried to figure out what's going on here with the resourcing side of things, everywhere there's complexity in this process, any, everywhere there's complexity for you or for your client, that causes friction, friction in the adoption process. And when things are difficult to sell and deliver, it's bad for our clients and it's, it's bad for us too. Here's what we found. These kinds of workflows, if you look at the screen right now, these kinds of workflows, these are the kinds of workflows that you can create for a Pearl campaign. Microsites, business rules, uh, versioning rules, emails, all of this incredible technology. All of these things taken together are incredibly powerful and drive response. But most print companies, most print folks have a hard time delivering this, coming up with this kind of solution. It's not something you're accustomed to, right? Developing a complete direct mail marketing solution. We realized, man, we're asking for a lot here. This isn't easy. 
So as we took a closer look at the successful mailers to see how exactly they're solving for this complexity, what we noticed is that the most successful print and mail companies often did something that honestly completely surprised us. They sold one very specific Perl and personalized QR code workflow. I'm abbreviating that as PQR. They all sold basically the same workflow. I'm gonna show you that in just a second, okay, if you wanna take a picture of it. But what we learned is that, and, and Mackenzie, you use these words often, there's kind of this toe in the water solution that almost any print company can take hold of with minimal work on their part or minimal work on their client's part that reduces that friction that we're talking about here. Eliminating the need to hire people or to get them trained up and makes it easy for the end customer to say yes, which is what we all want. So let me show you a diagram of that. If you want to take a picture, go ahead and snap a picture of this. Um, also, if you want the, the materials, I said, we're happy to send this to you. This is a deceptively simple workflow that adds significant value to the process. Here's how it works. Step number one, add that personalized URL and personalized QR code to the mailer, right? We've talked about that. Now, when somebody types that Perl or scans a QR code, instead of taking them to a complete microsite that you need to build out or that you need to work with your customer to build out. The toe in the water here is to do what we call a transparent redirect. In other words, take the person who types the Perl or scans the QR code, take them to an existing page on your customer's website. That could be a form. That could be some sort of data capture uh, uh, form, some sort of lead capture form, anything like that that the customer wants to drive traffic to. The key is, is that now you're generating a real-time lead alert and you're able to report on the efficacy of that direct mail. Give me a yes in the chat if you're getting this. The Perl and the personalized QR code lead to an existing website. Okay, so instead of anonymous web traffic going up and down on the corporate site, your customer's website, now you know exactly who that is. Give me a yes in LinkedIn if you're getting this. Give me a yes over here in Zoom if you're getting this. This workflow, as we've found, makes it possible for printers and mailers and their clients to get up and running quickly. Mackenzie, I took a picture of your uh, Tesla Roadster here. <laughs> this Tesla Roadster goes zero to 60 in 1.1 seconds. And this kind of workflow is like Mackenzie's Tesla Roadster. It allows folks to get up and running quickly. This is another place where I'm like, gosh, this simple idea this one plus one doesn't equal two, it equals three, because that redirect where you're tracking that information is life-changing for organizations. It's gonna help you and your client, whoever it is that is overseeing direct mail, unlock more from the direct mail you're already doing. Does that make sense? And it doesn't require an enormous amount of change on the part of you or on the part of your customer. By the way, just last week, I was speaking to a printer who does real estate campaigns. And he told me that, look, what, the moment we added the PQR code, the personalized QR code, our response rates went from half a percent to 1.5%, okay? That's not insignificant. That makes a difference. So please, folks, hear me. I don't want you to miss this opportunity to reconsider QR codes. They used to suck. I completely agree with that. Remember, you used to have to download these crappy apps. They, half the time they didn't work. Talking about friction, that caused a lot of friction for the recipient of that mail piece. But now, because the QR code reader is built into the camera on almost all modern phones, that friction is gone. And because of the pandemic, people know what to do. Don't miss that opportunity. Now, as I transition into the third item here, let's talk about the elephant in the room. I know that most of you want to sell more print, right? Give me, a, give me an X in the chat if that's what you want to do. You want to sell more direct mail. Ultimately, at the end of the day, that's what we want to do. And you've got me, this excited, uh, amped up tech guy, talking to you about pearls, blockchain, metaverse, all this high tech stuff, right? But the question is, how does this actually help us sell more print? Let's talk about that. In this section three here, I'm going to talk about the counterintuitive way that adding these digital elements to direct mail actually helps us drive more high-value print. 
I showed you this redirect framework a second ago, right? And as we were doing this research, we also found something else kind of strange, actually, to be honest with you, related to how the successful print and mail companies are selling these workflows to their clients. At the end of the day, what we're trying to do here at MindFire is we're trying to provide printers with a growth plan, more revenues, more margin. And in order for that to be true, we got to figure out, part of our job is to figure out why do some sell successfully and others don't. And we do quite a bit investing in the community, sales tools, sales coaching, sessions like those that you see here and that you're a part of today. But it turns out that there was a, a pretty significant first step that we completely overlooked. And the question that we were asking ourselves is, how the heck are some print companies head and shoulders above the rest in terms of their ability to sell? Um, often the difference isn't even funny. I was, I was thinking about preparing for today and I found this on TikTok. Actually, Shaquille O'Neal shared this. This kid is 18 years old. He's already 7'9 and he can dunk without even leaving the floor. And so the reason why I put this here is because, you know, print companies, print company A, print company B, they're all composed of people. Right on the surface, they look the same, but some are clearly head and shoulders above the rest. How are they easily dunking while others can't even get off the ground? What's that all about? And as we looked into this, you know, there's a lot of factors. Everyone's different. Every business is different. Every situation is different. There's a lot of stuff going on. But in a time when CMOs are pulling back budget, pulling back on direct mail, maybe putting more into digital than into direct mail. This is important to understand. How do you compete? The research that's coming in right now, folks, around how companies are feeling about the time that we're entering here in this, in this recession is sobering. According to this research, some 95% uh, of businesses fearing this recession are going to cut budgets. So in speaking to the successful commercial printers who are selling this, to understand how they're selling these services, what I found, what we found is surprising. And it's a little bit controversial. In fact, um, I often get heat for sharing this, including here within MindFire with my team. People don't want us talking about this. But many of the most successful companies sell their first campaign for exactly the same amount. Any guesses? Give me some guesses here. I'm going to throw up this Jeopardy music. I want to see if you guys can give me a read here. LinkedIn and Zoom. What are they selling their first campaign for? Michael, Angela, Brett. Come on, give me some give me some insight here. Okay, I see Vernon threw down an answer. John is saying for cost. Uh, my man, uh, let's see, now they're coming in quickly. 50, plus 50%. Todd is saying more. Dean, interesting. Very interesting. Let me tell you folks, some of you actually did get it right. Nothing. Zilch. Yep. Andrew, you got it. They give it away for the first time only. Why? Why are they giving away this free service? Here's what I realized. Once the end customer, the brand, realizes the power in the data, they're hooked. It's like once they have this taste of the insight, it propels that account forward where the printer, you can sell more print, more direct mail, and more deeply intertwine yourself with the client's business. Now, as I was thinking about this, anybody know who this is? If you have kids, this is Blippi. Let me know if you know who Blippi is. Anyone have kids and they know Blippi? This isn't a perfect metaphor, but bear with me for a moment. He's like the, uh, uh, the modern day Pee Wee Herman. I know some of you know uh, Pee Wee Herman, but he's on YouTube. God, it's freaking terrible. But what happens is my kids watch Blippi's free content, all of his free YouTube videos. And if you have kids, you know what I mean uh, when I say this. They get hooked. Then what happens? Well, YouTube shows them ads, uh, stuff that they want to buy. And man, at that point, I've lost complete control over the situation. It's game over, right? YouTube serves as free content, Blippi, gets them hooked. It's highly irresistible to my kids. Once they have that first taste... Uh, then YouTube starts making money by selling them ads and selling crap to my kids and pushes my kids to buy more stuff that my wife and I have to buy at the happiest place on earth, which is, of course, <laughs> Target. My kids love Target. But joking aside, just like once my kids get a taste of Blippi and they have to go back for more, the same is true here. 
I realized that by giving away this service for free, once these printers hook their clients with the data, and because of that insight, once they showed their clients how they were flying blindly before, right, that data becomes gold. Now, I've got a great partner here who's on the call right now. He gave me permission to share this. These are some snapshots. Let me illustrate for you just a simple example of some of the data that you can provide your clients. This is redacted to protect the client, but let me show you the kinds of insights that you can start to provide your client. I wanted to get the wheels turning here for you, get you to start to think about how significant an opportunity is to tap into the data. Let me first of all remind you where these reports fall into the process here, right? Let's take this toe in the water example. Put the Perl and the PQR code on the direct mail piece. When somebody types that Perl or scans the QR code, track that response as it goes to an existing website, right? And now in step three, we're talking about the reporting, the insight, the result of all that activity. So that's what you're seeing here on the screen. Here's a dashboard view that allows you to start to understand key questions. Questions like, what's driving response? Is it when we mail? Is it the template that we're using? Is it the teaser text we're using? Is it the envelope? What is it that's driving response? Hmm, maybe it's the teaser text. Well, what else is driving response? Is it something about the individual? Is it their FICO score? Is it uh, the rate spread that we're offering them? What is it that's allowing us to find success with this campaign? Uh, Michael, I don't know if Michael's here from Alpha Graphics in Seattle, I think it was. When he signed up, he said, how do I differentiate on the same product that our competitors can produce and that they're trying to sell for less? How does one differentiate these days? Do you think if you offered, Michael, this kind of insight that your competitors are not, I can assure you of that, that you'd stand apart? What about for the rest of you? If you could offer this to your customers, do you think you would stand apart? And so it's this gold, this data that allows you to do more of what delivers results that makes it irresistible to your client after you give them that initial taste. And that's what we uncovered here. Uh, Venice, I think I'm pronouncing your name correctly, from Canada. When, when Venice signed up, said, what is the most effective way to convince our customer to use direct mail, to see the ROI on direct mail, especially if they haven't tried mail yet? Well, for most people, it's the data. It's the ROI. For people who are numbers oriented, ROI oriented, what's better than this? These results are what allow you to prove the ROI, the value of direct mail. It's really that simple. When we speak to sales reps, when we speak to print companies who are doing direct mail, it's this aspect of it that they quickly grab hold of and say, you know what? I've got to provide this to my customers. My customers need to see this not only is it good for your customer, but it's good for you as well to prove the value of what you're doing. So this one plus one, not equaling two here, but equaling three is an extremely powerful combination. Now, I know that when I share this strategy of giving away the first one, sometimes that takes heat. Not always good to give away stuff for free, right? But when the expectation is set properly up front, this strategy, I've seen this strategy generate millions and this has been transformative for the people who have embraced it and this is what's given us confidence to help more printers grow print even in this economy now i've got a case study here from my friend mike robinson uh they're a, they're a great print and mail company in texas let me show you a case study and then we're going to get to to many of your questions here's a here's a quick case study available off of their website right they did an A-B split test. This is a case study with a national financial services company, and they wanted to increase response rates. Think back to that story I told you at the very beginning. And they decided to A-B split test the Pearl idea. They mailed 2 million pieces a month and tested the Pearl direct mailer against their control with no Pearl. So they had the control on the Pearl, and the test had the Pearl, and they ran this over six months. Here's what they found. The Pearl lifted response 20 to 30%. And this was a significant lift for them. And now all of that mail uses the pearl. So this is an opportunity, folks. I don't want you to miss. I don't want you to miss this. I want to get to all your questions. McKinsey, thank you for doing that. If you can start to pull some of those questions, I want to make sure we leave plenty of time for real-time real Q&A here. 
So if you can start preparing that, Mac, I'll, I'll ask you to come on here shortly in a second. But I want to ask all of you a question right now, LinkedIn and Zoom. First of all, if you followed what I showed you in Secret One and you added a pearl and a QR code to a, every mailer, and then you used this toe-in-the-water solution by doing this what we call the simple transparent redirect, and then you used the data to report this back to your client. Do you think you could be successful? Tell me in the chat right now. Do you think you could be successful? Do you think? Francois says yes. David says yes with an exclamation mark. Let me know in LinkedIn as well. Yes, says Todd. Yes, says Phil. Yes, says Vinny. Yes, says John. Yes, says Vernon. Keep those yeses coming in. Great. Now, I also would imagine that I've, I, you know, I, I get excited. I talk quickly. I, I, I imagine some of you feel a little overwhelmed because I've thrown so much, so much at you. And sometimes people tell me they feel like this little girl here on the screen. They feel like uh, drinking out of a fire hose, right? I know I go quickly. And so that's why I want to move quickly here into the, the questions that you all have that this has raised for you. So Mac, please start to pull those together. But before I do that, I want to make sure that as McKinsey's pulling that together, that if anything we've talked about here today, if you agree, if you disagree, if you want to dig into this further for yourself or for a customer, I want to give us an opportunity to talk one-on-one -on -one about this. If today's session has sparked any desire in you to go deeper and to see, could this work for you? So I asked my team to set aside some time over the next week so we can speak with you personally about how we could supercharge the direct mail that you offer your clients. Um, if you haven't started, if maybe you've tried and it hasn't worked in the past, or if you're just not sure how to get to that next step, there's no obligation, of course. We're not trying to sell you anything here. We just want to talk and see how could we help you? How could this help you? So my team, Mindfire team, please take this URL, drop it into the chat, and folks, if you want to book an opportunity to have a conversation like that, take a moment. You can turn me down as McKenzie is getting those questions ready and go in there. And it's a very uh, short form. Fill in that form and we'll make sure that we allocate some time and talk to you about your specific situation. I know everyone's situation is a little bit different. Let me clarify who this is for, who this call is for. If you're a print and mail company, maybe you're in ownership, leadership, sales, marketing, production, and you do direct mail for your clients and you want to offer more value to your customers, then this call is for you. If this describes you, then let's talk. By the way, I know that these days it seems like uh, time is flying, right? And that the years, the months, the weeks, all of those are going by faster than ever. Anybody feel that or is it just me? If you feel that way, by the way, you're not wrong. I, I couldn't believe this, but I saw this last night, two nights ago. The earth is actually spinning faster <laughs> than usual and we had our shortest day on, in history on june 29th anybody know that this is real our days are getting shorter it's science <laughs> so if you need help let us help you save minutes hours days weeks months maybe even years in this process by having that conversation now the other thing i know i've shown you some stats and i've given you some numbers about the efficacy of adding pearls and pqrs i know some of you are skeptics right Statistics can be manipulated. Let me show you what I mean by, by that. These are actual true stats, okay? It turns out that there are 1.4 billion people in China, right? There are 7 billion people on Earth. Therefore, statistically, you can't argue this, one out of every five babies born on Earth is Chinese. So you could stay, say statistically that if you have four kids like I do and you're expecting a fifth, it will be Chinese. <laughs> now, don't be surprised. That's my stats joke for the day. I'm not going to give you another one, but don't be surprised. I know I'm jesting here. I'm, I'm, I'm making you laugh here, but I know some of you are doubting a little bit, but why not just find out if this is true? What if you are wrong? If you have four kids and you're working on the fifth, I hope I'm wrong in this case, of course, unless maybe you're Chinese, but let's just talk. Take a minute, turn me down, fill in that form. And if you want to speak further, Book a time and opportunity to talk to me and, and to the team. So, Mac, with that little prelude, I hope you're ready. Let's take some questions, Mackenzie and, and my uh, Mindfire team. Please uh, drop this URL into the chat, www.mindfiremarketing.com slash yes. And now, Mac, let's get to all these wonderful questions here. 
Awesome. So I have a bunch of questions from the audience, which I've gotten from the chat. But first, I have a question. So just because I've okay. been listening, if that's okay with you. So sure. back in the beginning, you said that our first print and mail company, the one that we worked with, um, specifically asked for this. And I'm, I don't know, I feel like it's a little bit hard to believe just that they specifically asked. So when you say that, are you saying that the end customer came to us and said, hey, we need pearls or QR codes or Tell us a little bit more about that, because I feel like a lot of times our customers are not coming to us specifically mm. asking for it. Dang, you come out swinging, Mac, with the first one. <laughs> well, no, that's that's a that's a really good catch, Mac. You're you're absolutely right. So let me just rephrase that. Um, the end client, the end customer was not asking for like, hey, can you add pearls and PQRs to my direct mail? So you're absolutely right in that. Okay. What they were asking for was to increase response and generate more leads. So I think what you're getting at, this is something we see even today, I see a lot of print reps fail, and, and for that matter, print companies fail, because they say, you know what, my clients are not asking for this new technology. Right. They're not asking for this new substrate. They're, they, you know what, they're, they're not asking for me to print it on my, my Indigo or on my Canon device or whatever. They're, they're, they're not asking for that, right? You're right. The customers care about the outcome, the leads, the sales, the response. Folks, it's not their job to come and ask you for pearls and PQRs and the dashboards <laughs> like you saw today. You know whose freaking job that is? That's your effing job. So if your customers are not asking you for that, and Mac, thank you for calling BS on me there. I really appreciate that. That's what Mac does like 90% of the time, by the way, here at Mindfire. She calls BS on me. But you're absolutely right, right Mac. The printer knew that they needed to provide a better service to their customer. The end customer isn't going to come and ask for a specific technology. Okay, I'm gonna get off my soapbox. Yeah, Mac, I will, next just question. really quickly, and then we'll go. I was yeah. on a call with a customer or and their customer, and the first thing that he opened with and said is part. Of, so this is the printer talking. He said, "Part of my job here as your partner is to come to you with new ideas that are going to help you get to your results." So I thought that was a good talk track. So anyone who's trying to talk mm. to their customers, that might be a good intro statement because then immediately you provide value to them. So um, just give that to, a lot of people are asking if they can get the slides in the recording. So let's just address that. Oh yeah, definitely. So if you want the slides that I've shown you, what we'll do is we'll, we'll uh, package this up as a PDF. We'll send you the PDF, the recording. Mm -hmm. um, so if you want that, drop your best email in the chat here in Zoom or on LinkedIn and the Mindfire team will follow up on that later today. And we'll, we'll definitely get it out to you if anybody wants that. Thank okay. you, Matt. Good question. Perfect. I'm just going to keep going because there's a bunch of them. Okay. Um, okay. So when you asked or when you showed us the redirect to the existing website or what you called the toe in the water solution, can yep. you track what happens on the client's website? Ah, good question. So so the question is from the direct mail piece, if somebody scans or types the, the pearl and ends on the client's destination client website, website, can we figure out what actually happens on the other side? Is that the question? Sounds like it. Okay. Yes. So there is a pixel or a tracking script that your customer can insert on their website that allows us to create that closed loop uh, visibility back into MindFire to report on the entire process. So the answer is yes. Okay. Um, let me know if I answer that, whoever asked that question. Mac, let me ask you a question. I saw this come in. I, I don't know if it was in Zoom or LinkedIn, but someone was asking about just roughly like what are the, the cost to the print and mail company to do this? If you can just give just some high-level guidance, this is probably something we can talk about in a call if somebody's interested, but high-level guidance on the cost to the print and mail company if they want to offer this. Yeah, so if you are a print and mail company and you want to offer it this, the good thing is it's not all up front, I meaning you can do it based on volume. So typically it's a very small, what I call incremental cost per piece that's really insignificant to the overall program. So it's not very expensive if that's what you're asking. Okay. If I, I didn't see who asked that question, please let my team know or go to that URL, uh, www.mindfiremarketing.com slash yes. And let's, let's talk further, make sure we get that question answered. Next okay. question, Mac, what do we got? Next question, is creating a pearl a simple process for each unique customer? I think they mean if you have a large list. Got it. Uh, so the MindFire technology uh, creates the pearl. And actually, the way we're doing it now, because of the, the people issue, the staffing and the resourcing okay. issue that we talked about just a moment ago, is 
you send us your mail file or mail files, and the MindFire team does the creation of the pearls and the PQRs for you. So you don't, you don't even need to use the software in order to do that. We do that work for you to eliminate the need to go and hire or train somebody and get them up to speed on using the software. The MindFire team does that. So it's not that difficult uh, to introduce into your workflow uh, process. So let me know if I answered the question. Who, who asked that, Mac? Tom B. You remember? Tom B. Okay. And awesome. also Tom B had, an, had a comment, which I think is worth talking about. I chatted to him, but just so everyone else... He said something which is very smart. You would think that USPS and Canada Post would insist on QR and, U and PURLs on printed pieces to reinforce the value of printed mail pieces. So maybe you can just talk about some of those USPS promotions. He wasn't aware of them, um, but other people might not be either. Sure. Is that in Canada specifically he's referring to? He's in Canada, but he said he's talking about USPS or Canada Post in general. Yeah. Yeah, so we're actually going to do another webinar specifically on that with um, a, a, an expert on on uh, the post postage uh, incentives that are available. But here in the United States through the USPS, uh, much of this digital technology that I described to you today, actually, uh, you'll get an incentive, uh, 2 to 4% off postage if you run campaigns using this kind of technology. So the USPS does incent you to do this. So that's another reason why you should take a look. Uh, in some cases, depending on the volumes and the scale of the customer that you're running this for, that uh, percentage that you're saving, that 4% as an example, is significant. And in many cases can offset the costs that we're talking about here. So um, yeah, definitely something that we should we should do more leaning into, McKinsey, and more education on. But let us know if you want to talk further about that. We can go into all the details with you. Okay, Robert B says, if the end user client is not sophisticated enough to add the web page to their site quickly, can MindFire build the page for the end user and add it to their website? Yes. Yeah, and the other thing I said in chat to him is that, just for clarification, in many cases with the toe in the water solution, we're actually not asking the customer to build a new site on their website or a new page within it. We're just saying go to wherever they're going to right now um, as a toe in the water solution. So they don't have to do anything. Yep. Uh, next is David G. Does it take multiple mailings to be able to provide effective value? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah. So David, uh, you know, some folks out of the gate get lucky, I would say, and do a great job in their first campaign. But the way I see the most successful print companies that we work with engage their customers, they say, look, this is not one and done. Even if you're just doing direct mail with all, without all of the stuff that we're talking about here, as you know, I think most of you know, uh, it's an iterative process. You learn what works and what doesn't. The key is, or the point here is, is that unless you have this kind of tracking technology, you don't really know what's working, what's not working. So I would advise you, highly advise you, that if your customer's saying they just want to do one and they're going to give up after the first uh, generally speaking, that's inconsistent with what I see our more successful customers doing, where they say, you know what, this is going to be an ongoing campaign. We're going to learn after the first. We're going to apply those learnings to the second. We're going to move on to the third, go to the fourth, go to the fifth, and over time, incrementally continue to improve based on the learnings, the data that are being pulled in. Yeah, I'll tell you the answer that I gave. So number one, I think that it actually does provide immediate value because they're able to obtain data that they never had before. So even if, yeah. as an example, I'm actually working with an automotive marketer, he has never had this on QR codes on his mail before. So he literally said, and they, they were sending, it was a small test of 10,000. He said, if we even get five, to me, mm. it is beneficial because mm. that is five people to show them, hey, this is the type of data you can get. So from a, right. is the overall process valuable? I think so, because they're getting data that they haven't seen before. The other thing is, I think it's how you frame it, right? Like Dave was saying, if you set this up as, hey, we need to be able to get some benchmark data to be able to start incrementally improving. Again, set it up. If you say, hey, we're going to hit it out of the park, you're going to get 50% more. Right. Then you kind of set yourself up you know, for not for success. But if you say that, hey, we're going to get data and we never had before, we're going to use it as benchmark, then that's that's helpful, my perspective. Mackenzie, since we're up against the time, uh, let, let's go into overtime if everyone's okay with that. But I know some people have to drop off. If you have okay. to drop off, let me ask everybody here a question before you leave, and then we're going to continue. Let's get into more of the questions here. But here's the question I have for you. At the very beginning, I said my hope was to give you at least two new ideas, two new sparks of an idea that you could apply to your business. And what I wanna know is just give me one. What's one thing that stood out to you today? LinkedIn, 
tell me, please, Zoom, people here in the room, tell me. Tell me before you have to leave. We're going to go into overtime for sure here. I want to get to all, your, the, all the remaining questions. But what is something that stood out? I see uh, Phil saying PQR code stood out. I see Kevin C saying QR codes. LinkedIn, where are you at? Let me know, LinkedIn. What, what is it that you garnered out of the conversation today? Francois saying the responses in real time. Dean is saying adding the QR code. Come on. What else stood out to you, folks? Give me the gift of some feedback here. LinkedIn, I want to see what, what you got out of this. The magic sauce is tracking data, says Todd. Kevin says PQR codes. Interesting. I can see a theme here, McKenzie. Uh, Scott says personalizing a relatively impersonal mailer. Okay. Uh, Richard saying, please send me the recording and PDF slide deck. Yes, folks, if you have to leave, drop your best email in the chat, LinkedIn or Zoom. I know we're up against our time here. We will follow up. We'll get you the slides. We'll get you the recording, all the assets from today. Make sure you have that. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Love you, man. Awesome. Good presentation, says Phil. Uh, David says, just super excited to put all this tech info to use with our first PQR campaign to 2 million households. All right, David, way to go, man. Woo! Glenn says, uh, okay, now I'm getting the email addresses. Okay, if you have to leave, thank you, thank you so much for being here. We're not going to hang up. We're going to go into overtime here. Mackenzie, what's the next question? Okay, James just asked a really good question, which I want us to talk about, which is he said, can you tie a QR code to the address only, meaning the pearl without the first name, to an unknown person? For example, let's say you send a mailer to a home. Can you then drive it to a microsite to build up the database? Why don't you answer that, McKenzie? Okay. You saw the question. What's yeah, so James, I love this question because you're spot on. So as an example, if you are sending a mailer to people within three miles of a new whatever it is, right? Or some location, you don't know who those people are, but you have their address. The answer is yes, you can drive someone to a simple microsite where you ask their first name, last name and phone number or their email on their phone. And using that direct mail, you can drive them online to be able to obtain that data so that you build up your customer's database and have now people that you can call and email. So absolutely the answer is yes. Next Fantastic question. question. Yeah, next <laughs> yeah, question. Smart. Yeah. How easy is this to do at my company? Do I need a lot of people to do it? Ah, uh, I, well, I would say that the most successful companies we see have a few roles. Uh, I would say the most important role that you need is a champion. Who asked that question, Mackenzie? Uh, I didn't note it. Okay. All right. Whoever asked that question is a great question, but at the very least, you need a champion, somebody who embraces the technology, embraces the value, and becomes the in-house uh, resident expert, if you will, around how this can be applied to direct mail. Now, with the way that we are servicing our clients these days because of the, the staffing issues and, and people issues, all of the stuff that we talked about, because we do the work, you really don't need more than that. Yeah, yeah. Um, obviously, you need to equip your sales team to go out there and be eloquent and talk to uh, prospects and talk to clients. We can help you with that. We provide tools and resources to help your sales team do that in training. But at the very least, you should identify a champion in-house who can be the, the point person in-house to carry this stuff out and, and equip the team to be able to uh, do the work that they need to do. The actual nuts and bolts, the implementation and all of that, uh, we do. Some of our clients do say, hey, you know what? We don't need MindFire to do the work. We'll use the MindFire software to do all the work. So there's a platform uh, that some customers use as well to do the work themselves if, if they're equipped and resourced to do that. So uh, that's what some do. But to get started, you don't need a lot, but you do need that champion. You need somebody who's fully committed. Mac, how would you answer that? Uh, yeah, I would say you need someone who has the relationship with the customer to be able to actually bring them the new ideas. So that's number one. Um, okay. If you have relationships, if you or anyone at your company has a good relationship with your customer where they're open to hearing your ideas, which I hope everyone does, to me, that's the most important thing because from there, you can simply say, hey, I want to tell you about a new idea I have that's going to help you get better results. And then with this new program we have, you don't need to have anything from there. Like once they get to sit, once they say yes to trying it out, we'll do the rest. So from that perspective, I'd say that's the minimum. You can always build on from there. But like we always say, I'd start with the toe in the water solution and build from there. Make it easy on yourself versus having this inhibitor in your mind, which is, oh, it's really hard. I need to have the software. I need to have, and then you don't do it, right? I'd rather you start with something and toe in the water solution and get the value to your customers versus making it a bigger deal and then not, you know, having that stop you from starting. 
That's my answer. I see Tom said, Mackenzie, Dave, I have to leave. This was really of great value. Thank you from New Brunswick, Canada. I'll try to get some traction and be in touch. Awesome, Tom. Thank you for Tom, being you here. You were awesome. He asked so many great questions throughout this. So I appreciate your interactivity. Um, next question. Okay. This is specific to us. Robert B wants to know, do you have any prepackaged programs for small printers to resell to our B2B clients? Mm. Mac, why don't you answer that one? <laughs> this is what he likes to do. Yeah. <laughs> so That's yes, Robert, we do. This is sort of the toe in the water solution, making it easy for you to get started. We'll follow up with you and we can talk about your needs and then we'll make sure we um, get something for you and help you roll it out to your customers. And who was it that asked that? Robert B. Robert, thank you, Robert. Appreciate that question. I have two questions from Joe F. Uh, so the first one, Joe says, regarding the first campaign free, all the print, I assume not the postage. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. No, 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 that's a good clarification. Next time I do this, I need to do a better job there. It's the Pearl and the PQR portion specifically. Who asked that question? That's Joe F. Okay, Joe, you get the audience applause here. Good job, Joe. Yeah, not the print not the postage, right. the technology portion that we talked about, the pearls, the PQR code, the tracking and all of that. Joe, let me know if that makes sense. Thank you for that clarification. Next question, also from Joe, good question. Nonprofits, what are your thoughts on this vertical market with this technology? For nonprofits? Yes. Is that the question? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's one of the verticals that we see a lot of activity in. Um, you know, for appeals and uh, fundraising and other communication, where you can uh, target the, the mailers to the different uh, demographics, whether they be by um, you know, income level or if they've given in the past, you know, there's a lot of different ways to slice that data. Uh, for an organization that's dur doing direct mail and wants to drive donations, in fact, I think we have a case study around this uh, for, for fundraising and such, definitely uh, applicable. So if you wanna know more about that, uh, fill in the form, the www.mindfiremarketing.com forward slash yes. We'll set up a time to talk or we can uh, drop your email here in the chat. We'll get that over to you. All right, next question. George P, are your print clients building microsites, microsites or are they working with existing web links? Both. Uh, George P asked that? Yes. Yeah, both, George. Uh, what we found, to be clear, is that when we would go to a print company and say, look, your first step is to create a campaign with a microsite, that causes friction, both for you, the printer, as well as for your customer. Whereas if we go and say, hey, look, your first step is add the Pearl and the PQR and redirect to something that already exists, well, that's a lot easier to do. What happens once you do that and you start presenting the data and showing actually what's going on is that then the customer says, ah, hey, you know what? Instead of taking them to this page on my website, could we make a landing page specific to the direct mail? And George says, well, I'm glad you asked. Yes, we can. And so you start to create this roadmap, if you will, for your clients of let's start here, let's go here to step two, step three, and so on as they begin to understand the process. But some of our clients definitely do start with a microsite, but it's not something that we would recommend for everyone out of the gate. There is a toe in the water solution that allows you to kind of ascend clients through that process. Mac, how would you answer that? Would you say anything differently there? Yeah, I would say that, again, going back to what I said before, I we are trying to make it as easy as possible for you to be able to roll out these solutions to your customers. And so the idea of building a microsite with staffing issues and all the other challenges for most people, it's it's too far from where they are now. If you're already doing this, you're adding pearls, you're adding QR codes, then yes, the next great step might be to add a landing page, right? But if you're not doing it at all and your customers, um, you're not providing this to your customers, again, what's the one step forward you can take? So you can do either. It just depends on... Um, if you're able to, you know, what, what the easiest way to get you started is so that you can start to get them that value. You know what? I got a question for the audience. I have my good friend here, Mike. Mike, would you be willing to come on the air? <laughs> I don't know if you're uh, proper and prim and ready to come on, but I'd love to, to get you on the air here. I know we didn't prepare for this, but uh, Mike just said something interesting here, and I'd love for him to talk more about that if he's willing to come on uh, camera here. Um, oh, but he, he said, said okay, sure. Yeah, Mackenzie, go <laughs> ahead. Let's hook that up while I'm, what I'm, uh, while I'm mentioning what he said. But Mike said he wanted all of you to know that um, another use case here is that these leads that you're generating can be pushed directly into your customer's CRM. So the leads and the activity that you're generating off of the direct mail can be pushed into the CRM. Many of your customers, in fact, I'm sure are doing that. So Mackenzie, were you able to get him on here? I just elevated him as a panelist and gave him the ability to speak. 
It's kind of okay. nice, like being able to control if we can <laughs> let him speak or not. Yeah, Mike, if you don't mind, turn on your camera. I just asked him to unmute too. Okay, comb your hair a little bit. It is. Where is he? I'm on. Okay, this is. Okay, you're on. We can hear you, but we don't see you. Oh, there, there you go. Oh, there he is. All right, the man, the myth, and the legend. Everybody say hello to Mr. Mike Robinson, good friend. So, Mike, why don't you uh, expand upon what you just said? And by the way, before Mike starts here, folks, um, if you're still here, you're still here with us in overtime, and you have any questions around how does a print mailer actually do this, don't miss this opportunity to, act, to ask Mike Robinson right now. This, is guy, this guy is an expert. This guy knows his stuff, and he's very giving of his time. So please, if you have any question and you want to know from a peer how they do this, take the opportunity to ask Mike now. But Mike, go ahead and talk about that CRM point that you just made here in chat. So we've got a number of, of clients that have CRMs, and the, while the reporting is great, that dashboard you showed is great, a lot of them want it posted to their CRM. So I work with you guys daily and have the ability to post it into their CRM because they've already got workflows, things like that set up in the CRM to be able to take something from a post and push it out of that CRM. Um, so obviously your system can do emails, your system can do SMS. However, if they've already got a solution in place, you deliver the mail with the personalized URL, QR code, people respond. Again, they've already got workflows. You can push it into any CRM and it works very well. Mike, I'm going to ask you this question for my friend Jonathan, uh, Jonathan McGrew. Uh, he says, do you ever work with the customer to leverage their existing web teams and agencies for the landing page? Does that ever happen to you? Uh, yeah, it, it, it depends because, again, the direct mail side, as much as you want a company to be a team, they fight, as you said originally in the thing, for leads. Who gets attributed to the leads? So yeah. they usually want to take control. So typically – we work with the client and saying, hey, we're gonna match the creative similar to the letter, things like that. Unfortunately, most times when you start working with the digital or the agencies, it gets spun out of control. So you try to do the toe in the water test. And then once they see it works, if they wanna get involved or if they have to get involved, so be it. But trying to get somebody involved like that in the beginning is very difficult. And this question from William, Mike, I'm gonna throw at you as well. He says, I think this is great. Uh, William, I'm going to address this to Mike since he's a peer. How do you start to approach clients? Do you do a case study or a written proposal? How do you do that, Mike? Typically, and, and again, you know me, I love doing face-to-face. -face, so yep. I prefer to go meet with them. But if we're on a phone call or, or a WebEx or a Zoom, uh, talk to them about the advantages and walk them through, just like you did today, what a personalized URL is, how it works. And then the next step for us is, once they get buy off and sign off, I'll say, let me mock something up for you. Let me show you how it works. Let me mock something up for you and let's test it. Um, you know, the model you were talking away about is, you know, giving some of them away. Um, you know, hey, look, you pay for the build cost. I'll cover the cost of the pearls or vice versa. Um, that's typically how I sell it. I'm doing one right now um, in one of your older platforms. Um, and that's exactly what I did. Uh, they are paying for the build and I'm giving them uh, I don't know, 20,000 of them at no cost uh, to see how it works. And, and if it works, talking about the CRM, she's like, well, do you have, you know, we have a CRM, we have Salesforce. I said, yeah. I said, we absolutely could push it in Salesforce. However, if we're testing this thing, I don't want, I don't want you spending a ton of money on something if you don't know it works. Once you know it works, then let's talk about rolling it into Salesforce and other, and, 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 and other marketing channels. Makes a lot of sense. Mackenzie, um, I'm going to give you a chance to pull some other questions, but I'm going to call some people out by name here. I see Todd, Sean, Scott, Richard is here, Ray, uh, Mark H. Hey, Mark. Uh, Larry, Kevin, a couple Kevins, Joe, Jimmy, George, Francois, David. Folks, this was not planned. Mike is giving up his time here for a few minutes. Does anyone else have a question for Mike? If so, please drop that in the chat if you want to know from a peer who has done this successfully and is leading the way in their market. I'm sure Mike will give you uh, the honest truth here unvarnished, so please let us know there in the chat if you have a question. Mackenzie, uh, what else is still unanswered from, from the uh, the chat log here? Those are all the ones that I have. I'm just kind of scanning through one more time to make sure. Okay. So, Mike, a uh, question for you. What do you think we missed in today's overview that would be helpful for the group here? Anything that 
we didn't talk about that you think would be informative for everyone? Well, the CRM piece we discussed, um, the you covered a lot of it. I mean, we have a lot of people now looking at the postal savings. Uh, QR codes have been unbelievable since COVID. I know nothing is good out of COVID except maybe QR codes for marketers um, and personalized QR codes. But the, the key is tracking leads and, and attributing leads correctly. And now with the ability of using personalized URLs or QR codes, um, we can see the hand raisers, even though they don't respond, that's, that's just additional, we call them no actions. That's additional no action leads that you can start attributing to your marketing campaigns. And, you know, you've mentioned it, but that those are big, big key. Um, I, I get that we use those quite a bit. We use those quite a bit and um, it definitely helps marketing um, to have those additional responders, even though they don't respond, even though they don't complete a response. Hey, Mike, I have a question for you that wasn't on this, but some a few people have been asking me recently, which is, OK, we're used to sending normal, let's call it normal direct mail. How do you get from a creative perspective, what do you do to incentivize people to go to the Pearl or the QR code? Is there any specific tactics on where you place it on the mail or like talk to me about the creative element? So typically for us, um, it's, you know, there's, they have heat maps, things of that nature. But if I'm doing a direct mail piece, I typically put the Pearl, put the Pearl three times. And now that we're using QR codes, a QR code, you know, Interesting. most times. So wait, sorry, just, just really quickly. You actually put that same Pearl link three times throughout the mailer. I do. Interesting. And where we would put it would be most people when they get a direct mail piece. Again, Dave's right. We're kind of just doing things. Um, I don't know if this isn't even one of my pieces, but um, you know, if I'm showing a piece, here's a piece. Typically, we put something up here. Okay. That's where most people go. Up here, maybe in the body of the letter here. And then possibly down here, um, and then a QR code there, um, and that's what we typically do. And I, I try to avoid a lot of text. You know, yeah. most people don't like reading nowadays; they like seeing um, imagery, icons. So for the QR code, we have a QR code, so we show them the QR code, and then, like I said, top right, somewhere in the middle of the body of the letter, and then down at the bottom again. You know please go to X. Okay. Awesome. Uh, someone asked me yesterday, I'm just trying to think of other questions. I think we might have lost Dave. So we're kind of flying, <laughs> flying ad hoc here, but someone asked me, so let's say if I traditionally have people calling in, right? Let's say before you add these curls or personalized QR codes, if you had, I'm just making this up, 10,000 people call in when you add the pearls or the QR codes, is it that some of those 10,000 that used to call in just now scan online, are you seeing a net lift to the overall impact? Meaning more both. than 10? Okay. So you're going to see both. So we always, you always give, a, uh, when you're putting a mail piece together, you always give them the every method way to respond. And right. I say every method, it's typically online or phone. You know, and on the online, we're now getting rid of going to the website. We're now going to a personalized URL, right? So right. you are... If you have 10,000 people call, you know, no matter what, there's always going to be people who want to call and there'll always be people who want to go to our website. That's just the way it is. Right. What will happen is you will get some of the 10,000 to probably scan a QR code to go to their Pearl. And then you will, you will get a net new people that will now go to the, the, to the landing page or scan or go to their Pearl. Yeah. I kind of talk about it as casting a wider net, right? Like you're always going to have your people that are calling. You're always going to have your people that want to go to the web, but the more options you give people, the more you're casting a wider net to give people the ability to answer in the way that they want. That's um, right. Okay. Awesome. Let me think if there's any other questions. I know Dave got kicked out. I'm just trying to think of anything off the top of my head. <laughs> How about this? If you're working with a customer, is there someone specific on the customer's end? So like the marketing person or the data person that actually is most interested in this, or is it kind of anyone that you're speaking to? It depends. It depends on the, it depends on the client, but most times our direct contact, the person that's, that's handling direct mail, um, the fight typically is, oh, well, that's now digital. That's not mine, but no, it's not. It is digital, but it's not. It's direct mail. Right. It's a direct mail response mechanism. So you control the phone number. You need to control this personalized page right. um, as well. So typically it's our direct mail contact 
typically not data. Um, it might be the marketing people if they want to do some sort of creative, but um, it's usually your contact. Well, it's, whether it's your marketing manager, your director of production, whatever it is. Okay, awesome. I have one more question, and that's specifically on the reporting. I did see earlier in the chat you were saying you love the reporting. Talk to me about what do people actually want to know? Like this idea of reporting, I feel like is sometimes a big elusive thing. Like, do, you, do they know scans? Like, tell us about what is the reporting information that people want to know? So that report is actually my report, right? That's yeah. the one that my customer and I put together because he was doing everything based on um, a, a, a spreadsheet and it was taking him weeks to do this. So now what we actually did was <clears throat> he showed us what he wanted. Um, he had to add some additional fields in his data file that we load. And we actually put some, as David said earlier, some tracking pixels on the site. So we know conversions, et cetera, but that's what he wanted. We saved him probably two weeks worth of work every month. Um, so that's what they want to see. Most customers. Honestly, Wait, sorry. I'm sorry. You, you just kind of glazed by something, which I think is really big. <laughs> what he's saying is that, correct me if I'm wrong, Mike, you're able to provide your customer reports that typically take them two weeks every month. So you basically offloaded that work from them. Is that, I just want to make sure I heard you correctly. No, that's right. That's what he said. He had said it takes him weeks to get this, to do these. Wow. It takes, wow. sorry, again, this wasn't planned. <laughs> um, uh, little guns and roses uh ring ringtone sorry about that okay. um so yeah it, it saved him time and obviously saving him time is going to give him more time to help us work with him additional creative additional strategies etc but most clients they use the reporting but they don't use it the way they should most mm. of them have crms that's why when dave asked me to come on um, I mentioned that CRM. Most of them already have, most of them have CRM systems and they're utilizing them and want to capture that information. And they already have a lot of reporting. The, the cool thing about your stuff is um, we're now moving it, trying moving it to some list based reporting. Um, and I think that's going to help. And that might actually augment or, or, or give the client better reporting than what they're seeing in their CRM. Awesome. Another question. Sorry, I told you it was the last one, but now okay. <laughs> has having these has having these ability to do this been able to get you into new accounts? It always has. I've been, I've been using you guys since you were still in high school. I think Mackenzie, <laughs> no, it probably, probably God, 2009. Does that sound right? Mackenzie? I think so. Yeah. Like I, I and actually so remember the first thing you told me we were at a trade show and you said, this was your shiny object to get into customers. You always said, look, print and mail is what we do, right? It's in the name of our freaking company. This is what we actually want. But this shiny object of this reporting in the state is what allows us to get into it. So that always kind of stuck with me. Yeah, you've got to have a differentiator. Anybody can print and mail. Now, I say anybody can print and mail with the way technologies are. You know, if you're not advancing in technologies with inkjet and uh, inkjet web and things of that nature, then you're falling behind. But assuming everybody has the similar technologies, you've got to have that shiny object, something that's differentiating you above everybody else. And our shiny object is obviously our technology, our speed, things of that nature, as well as the, the, the mind fire technology that we utilize. Um, I mean, I'm, I, know I'm, I know I'm probably one of your only customers that meet with you guys on a regular basis to help um, give you guys insight on what to build because that's what our customers want. Um, so yeah, we, we have that shiny object, we utilize it and that does get us in the door quite a bit with, with opportunities for sure. Awesome. Well, Dave, you're back. Good I job, Mackenzie, like carrying us forward. <laughs> huh? I said, you're back. I was about to give him the last word. So now Do you're the back. Do the last word, head. baby. Do the last word. Yep. Go ahead. <laughs> Mike? Close yeah. oh, out my. with the last word. Words of wisdom on a Friday. Words of wisdom on a Friday. Um, well, um, nothing on this. I mean, your site is great. We utilize your site. Now, if you could, again, like most people said at the beginning, help me find paper and good employees who don't want to just work remote and actually integrate, in, you know, work, with, work with people and work together and come up with good creative solutions. And again, paper, 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 envelopes. Yeah, that's, that's basically it. All right. So you're saying good people, paper, 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 and mind fire. Yeah. That's your Friday afternoon. <laughs> that, that, that absolutely, that absolutely is. You guys are a great partner. We love working with you most of the time. Um, 
but no, you guys are great. You guys have helped us grow our business uh, substantially, and we appreciate it. Um, you know, we we couldn't do we couldn't we wouldn't be where we are without you guys. I'm sure it's vice versa. Aww. Wow, absolutely true. Thank you, Mike. And I know absolutely. I put you on the spot, sure. bringing you on the air, but I appreciate you, man. Um, I see David, Kevin, Tom, Todd are all still here. Let's give them 30 seconds, folks. Any last questions for me, Mackenzie, or Mike? The three M's. Anybody? If oh, not, I will bring us to thanks. a close. Yeah, you like that? Alliteration? Uh, let's see. Kevin's saying the same issues in Canada uh, with, I think, paper and people is what he's talking to. Paper, people, postage, right? Those three P's. Um, all right. Thank you, Kevin. Appreciate you. All right, uh, Mackenzie, I'll go ahead and uh, bring us to a close. Thank you, uh, Mike. Uh, for being with us today. Thank you, Mac, for, uh, you know, fielding the questions and carrying us over there in the brief uh, interruption of my, uh, my absence here. I appreciate all of you who are still here. Thank you for being here. If you got value out of this, uh, please let us know. We're happy to help in any way we can. And we look forward to seeing you uh, the next time we do one of these events. Thank you all. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.